This is Plant-Based Briefing, Plant-Based Weight Gain Tips, How to Gain Weight the Healthy Way, Part 1, by Ocean Robbins at foodrevolution.org. And I'm Marian Erickson, and this is the Curated Content Plant-Based Podcast, where I narrate a variety of articles on healthy, compassionate, and sustainable living with permission in about 10 minutes or less every weekday. And today's article is a bit longer than that, so it's going to be split up into two parts. I'll read Part 1 today and Part 2 tomorrow. This one was a request by a listener who noted that I've done a few posts on weight loss with plant-based diets, but they have a friend who said they could never go vegan because they have trouble keeping weight on. So this article addresses that issue. It's by Ocean Robbins, the CEO of Food Revolution Network, which is a nonprofit organization committed to healthy, ethical, and sustainable food for all. Food Revolution has more than 500,000 members, and with the collaboration of many of the top food revolutionary leaders of our times, they aim to empower individuals, build community, and transform food systems to support healthy people and a healthy planet. So now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. Plant-Based Weight Gain Tips How to Gain Weight the Healthy Way, Part 1, by Ocean Robbins at foodrevolution.org Summary Conversations around weight usually revolve around losing extra pounds, but that isn't the story for everyone. Many people actually struggle with the opposite, feeling underweight and wanting to gain pounds to achieve an optimal weight. Here's how to gain weight in a healthy way on a plant-based diet. For many people, losing weight is one goal in the larger journey to better health, as it has been well established that excess weight can contribute to chronic health conditions. Starting a plant-based diet and eliminating fast food, processed food, and animal products almost inevitably allows for the pounds to come off. This is in part because of the associated improved metabolism, higher water intake, higher fiber intake, and reduced fat and overall calorie intake that comes with eating plants. Many studies have found that the average vegetarian or average vegan tends to weigh less and be less likely to be overweight or obese. But for some, weight loss isn't the goal, and losing weight might actually be unnecessary and even detrimental to their health. If you're struggling to gain weight to reach a healthy weight, or you've lost too much and are now underweight, how do you gain weight on a plant-based diet without overeating or eating unhealthy processed foods? And how do you gain weight in the places you want, like in your muscles and not around the middle? Health Risks of Being Underweight Why does being underweight matter? For some people, it comes down to more than wanting to look a certain way. Being below your ideal weight can actually be detrimental to your health. Being underweight can result in fatigue and can make a person feel weak and low in energy. For women specifically, not having enough body weight, especially body fat, can result in hormone irregularities and disruptions in the menstrual cycle, which can be detrimental to bone health. Being underweight can be especially dangerous for pregnant women and can increase the risk of premature births. The risk for malnutrition increases for people who are underweight due to not getting enough calories or absorbing enough nutrients. Nutritional deficiencies are also more likely, including anemia. Malnutrition can lead to hair thinning or loss, osteoporosis, and weakened bones, dry skin, teeth issues, reduced heart function, impaired immunity and wound healing, gastrointestinal changes, and depression. Why do some people struggle to gain weight? Lack of food. Globally, the most common cause of being underweight is poverty. Today, worldwide, more than 821 million people are facing food insecurity. In June of 2020, a Kaiser poll found that 25% of all Americans were skipping meals or depending on food donations in order to eat at all. Humanity produces enough food to feed over 10 billion people, so never believe the myth that hunger and malnutrition are necessary. They are not. In a world of sufficiency, it is a source of enormous frustration and grief that we haven't yet been able to make hunger history. Until we get there, the continued existence of hunger and malnutrition are real problems that deserve attention from all of us. For tips on how to eat healthfully on a budget, click here. To support America's hunger relief organization, Feeding America, click here. After a shortage of food, the next most common causes of being below ideal weight are likely to be medical, genetic, and or lifestyle-related. Medical Challenges There are a few potential medical challenges that may be the culprit for being underweight. 
Hyperthyroidism, a condition in which the thyroid is overactive and boosts your resting energy expenditure, can lead to a high metabolism that burns more calories than you take in. Cancer can significantly reduce appetite, especially if you're undergoing chemotherapy or taking medications that cause nausea. Digestive problems like Crohn's disease, celiac disease, or ulcerative colitis can also impair the absorption of nutrients and reduce appetite, leading to unwanted weight loss. Some autoimmune conditions can reduce appetite, cause intestinal malabsorption, and make weight gain challenging due to digestive issues like bouts of vomiting or diarrhea. In type 1 diabetes, the kidneys are often working to rid the body of excess sugar through urine, which can lead to water-related weight loss and loss of calories from unused glucose. Plus, type 1 diabetes may cause the body to burn fat and muscle for energy at times when not enough glucose is available, leading to weight loss. And parasites, like having a tapeworm infection, can lead to weight loss largely due to having a foreign invader in your body consuming some of your calories. Restrictive eating disorders, such as anorexia, as well as certain metabolism-boosting or appetite-suppressing drugs, such as amphetamines or even tobacco, can result in not consuming enough food to sustain your weight. Metabolism and Genetics Some people may have a genetic predisposition to being underweight. Have you ever noticed that some people seem to be able to eat whatever they want and never gain a single pound? While people joke that this is a desirable trait, it can be extremely frustrating for someone who wants to gain weight. Basal metabolic rate, or how quickly your body burns calories at rest, is partly determined by your genes. You may be more likely to have a fast metabolism if you have family members who do too. Lifestyle. And lastly, some people simply burn more calories than they consume. If you're highly active, under significant stress, or if you just plain don't eat enough, then you may need to eat more calorie-dense foods. But does that mean you have to add a steady dose of heart disease-fueling french fries and burgers? Not at all. As you'll soon see, there are plenty of ways to add healthy calories to your diet. How is being underweight measured? The basic definition of being underweight is weighing less than is required for optimal health. Whether your weight is considered to fall within or outside of a healthy weight range is typically determined by your body mass index also called your BMI. Your BMI is your height-to-weight ratio calculated by your weight in kilograms divided by the square of your height in meters. While a healthy BMI is typically considered anywhere between 18.5 and 24.9, being underweight is defined as having a BMI of less than 18.5. Even though the BMI is a widely used tool, it's deeply flawed because it makes no distinction between a pound of muscle, a pound of bone, or a pound of fat. The BMI calculation doesn't take into account a person's muscle or bone mass and may overestimate body fat in athletes and others with muscular builds. It may also underestimate body fat in the elderly or others who have lost significant muscle or bone mass for some reason. Having a high or low BMI doesn't necessarily mean a person's weight is in an unhealthy range, but for many people it's a helpful gross metric. There are other determining factors of your health, such as your waist circumference, too. There is no set waist circumference size for underweight people, but for overweight people, it's over 41 inches for men and over 36 inches for women. When combined with your personal health history, a combination of your BMI and waist circumference can be used to assess your risk for certain health conditions. You just listened to Plant-Based Weight Gain Tips, How to Gain Weight the Healthy Way, Part 1, by Ocean Robbins at foodrevolution.org. And I'm Marian Erickson, and this is Plant-Based Briefing. Please take a minute to leave a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And please tune in tomorrow for part two of this article. And thanks for listening.